Anybody excited to be in God's house this morning? I am. I'm excited to be in God's house. I'm excited to be with my family, God's people. Uh, I think that God is going to do something so special in this place this morning. And um, man, I, I know I say it all the time, but we really had an incredible 2022. I mean, truly, God did just some remarkable things in our midst. Can we give God some praise? Go ahead. It's a, but he did. And, and one of the uh, lots of key factors involved in that, but one of the most important factors is our incredible volunteers that we have at the King's House. I mean, seriously, the volunteers is what makes this place work, what makes it run, what makes it effective. I'll, I'll never forget, I was uh, preaching at Dream City Church out in Phoenix last October-ish, something like that, and and afterwards, we after I preached, we went to dinner, and uh, I was Luke Barnett and Tommy Barnett, and, but I remember I was talking with uh, Luke's wife, Angel, and just talking about all that God's doing at the King's House and all the different events and the outreaches and the ministries. And she said, so Mark, you guys probably have like 15, 20 people on staff, something like that. And I said, oh no, there, there's five of us. And just blown away, she said, Mark, that's impossible. Like you can't do all that you guys do with just five staff. And I said, well, you haven't met my volunteers. You know what I mean? I mean, they are the ones that make this place possible. So listen, I know you saw the tables as you came in this morning. And uh, what those are is after the service, all of our department heads are, or a representative of those department heads are going to be out there for you to meet, for you to ask questions to. Because listen, at the King's House, we believe wholeheartedly that every single member of God's church, they matter. And I believe that every person in this room has gifts and talents and callings, and, and you need to be using those for the body of Christ. He didn't give you those just so he could say that he gave those to you. He wants you to use those things, King's House. We say it all the time, but at the King's House, we are one body, and everybody serves. So listen, I just want to encourage you to stop by those tables. Again, the department heads will be there. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you want to hear just what what all that entails for you. But listen, if you call this place home, you need to be plugged in, serving somewhere, doing something. Because if you're not, the body of Christ suffers. We need you be, to be doing that. And don't worry, because this Wednesday, right here in this room from 7 to 8, we're going to have a volunteer rally. We're going to have a volunteer training. We're going to get you uh, caught up to speed, knowing everything you need to know. I promise it's not hard. The systems, the processes are easy. They're user-friendly. And we'll We'll get you up to speed and get you serving. Amen. Can you guys do that for me? You're amazing, guys, really. We're kicking off this new series today called Pursue. And I uh, want to start with a, a very familiar passage of Scripture. We'll be on this series, Pursue, for the next three weeks. But I, I want to start with this very important passage of Scripture. It's important for, for today, and it's important for the, the rest of 2023. But Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Aren't you thankful for that this morning, church? Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. And this is the title of the message today, but even more than that, this is the entire theme for the King's House for 2023, with all your heart. Listen, God has been so good to this church, and all God's people said, man, he has. And I believe that God is looking for a response from, from his people in the year 2023. Everything that we are going to do this year, church, we are going to do with all our hearts. Look at your neighbor and say, with all my hearts. Every single ministry, every single department, our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, our outreach, our events, our discipleship. Listen, we are going to do it with all our hearts because we'll seek him and we'll find him when we seek him. Not half-heartedly, not, not complacency when we seek him with all our hearts. It's so very important. This word seek in the Hebrew, I want to put it on the screen for you. The Hebrew word is bakash, and it means to pursue, 
to pursue him with all your heart, specifically pursuing him through prayer and worship is the Hebrew meaning to this word. Now, now listen, I don't want you to, th- we, we have to expand our, our concept of what we think worship is just a little bit. I mean, we, we just had corporate worship for a few songs and we sang and we raised our hands and some of you stood there with your arms crossed looking like you're gonna go home and punch a puppy later or something like you're super, and I'm not judging you, maybe that's your love language, I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, when I want to communicate love to my wife and, and my affection, I don't cross my arms and stare at her like I'm mad, but maybe you do. So that, that's between you and the Lord, okay? Uh, but worship, according to Romans chapter 12, says this. Presents your bodies, presents your lives as a living sacrifice. This is your reasonable Look at your neighbor and say, reasonable. I mean, we're not talking some over-the-top extravagant. It is your reasonable act of worship. Like the bare minimum that you can do is to present every day of your life as an act of worship, as a living sacrifice, which again is why we're going to do everything this year with all our hearts, because we'll seek him and find him when we pursue him, when we pray, when we worship with all of our hearts. Are you guys okay this morning? Amen. God's promises through the majority of scripture are two-part promises. And I'm I'm gonna show you what I mean, but there's always this part of like, this is what I'm gonna do if you do what you're supposed to do. I mean, there's always these contingencies. Now, Now, not every single promise. I mean, he promises that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He promises that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with how good God is. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Yes, so I mean, there are those promises But I want to show you some of these other promises that are in two parts. You you know them. Scripture says, if you ask, you will. Your part is you got to ask. His part is to come through, right? If you seek, that's your part, then you are going to find. His part. Sometimes we want to receive. Sometimes we, we want to find him without doing our part. That's not how it works. Here's another example. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Listen to this contingency that the verse starts with. You know this verse, but it says, if my people, if. It's not, it's not a guarantee. It's not some foregone conclusion. It's in two parts. If my people who are called by my name, if they, if you'll humble yourselves, if you'll pray, if you'll seek my face, if you'll turn from your wicked ways, then, Scripture says, if you'll do this, then I'll do my part. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will hear the, heal their land. Two parts to God's promises. Sounds a little weird, but when, like, when you put it in everyday context, we as parents do this all the time. Two parts, right? If you will clean your room, I will take you to the movies later. Come on, parents. You call it bribery, manipulation, whatever you want to call it, but there's two parts to that promise, right? If you continue to talk to that boy, and if he sends you another text message like he just did, I will murder him. I will bury him where no one will find him, and you will be grounded forever, right? Again, two parts to that promise. Come on, where are you at, parents, this morning? You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go to jail, but if Melody makes it to marriage without me being arrested, it will be a miracle, King Sals. Pray for me. Pray for me. Two parts to these promises. I want to read this first verse to you backwards that I shared with you, and I think it's going to help you connect the dots a little bit because we all love the part, man, the plan and the purpose. Woo! But there's some contingencies through this scripture. So go with me again, Jeremiah 29. Let's start with verse 13. Again, our verse for the entire year says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me, when you pursue me with all your heart. Verse 12 says, then, listen, when you are seeking me and pursuing me with all your heart, that is the contingency, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen 
When you're seeking me, when you're pursuing me, then you're going to come to me and you're going to pray. And then you have my attention. And why do we need to be coming? And why do we need to be praying and asking? Verse 11 tells you this is why. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Come on, King's House, aren't you thankful this morning? But this is the progression. Listen, God has the best for your life. He has the best for your family. He has a future and a hope and a plan and a purpose for every person in this room. But there is only one path to finding what God has for your life, and that is pursuing him with all your heart. If you want to experience those things, friends, that's the only way to pursue him with all your heart, to seek him, to call on him, to pray, and then you have his attention, and he's listening, friends. I want to make a bold statement, but I truly believe it with all my heart today for every person in this room that 2023 can be your greatest year in the Lord yet. I I believe it wholeheartedly if, if you want it to be, if you are willing to seek him with all your heart, if you are willing to pursue him with all your heart, this can be the greatest year in God that you've ever had. You can grow more in this year than you've ever grown before. You can see God use you in ways that you never thought possible than every other year before in your life. You can see more promises come to pass. You can see more dreams birth in your heart if you will seek him, pursue him, with all your heart. I want to give you three quick steps this morning that I think are going to really help you pursue him with all your heart. Same chapter, Jeremiah 29, but I want to read verses five through seven. I think there's a couple really key principles throughout here this morning. I think it's very important to realize in in Jeremiah 29 here, Jeremiah is writing to the Jews that are in exile in Babylon. It's a very important context that you need to keep in the front of your mind as we read through these scriptures. These are exiles, Jewish exiles, in the nation of Babylon. Verse 5 says this, build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food that they produce. Now, again, this is not their home. Again, they don't really have a clue what the future looks like. They don't know how long they're going to be here. There's some, there's some things that they don't really understand. But God's word to them, I believe, is my first point this morning, that you need to go ahead and start now. Start now. Listen, if you want to pursue God with your whole heart, step number one, start right now. Listen, there were so many unsureties in these people's hearts. They were exiles. Again, how long are we going to be here? What does our future look like? I completely understand that there was a little bit of apprehension within this context. And maybe that's you this morning. I mean, maybe there's some things in life that you're very unsure of, some circumstances that are confusing, some questions that you have. The future might look unsure. You might be a little apprehensive, but the word of the Lord to you this morning, friend, is start now. Just start. I understand that you're in exile, but go ahead and build homes and make some plans to to stay. I understand that everything in your life may not be the way that you want it to be, but go ahead and start now, friends. Stop waiting for some day to get here. Stop waiting for some more opportune time to pursue God because the truth is, is that tomorrow never, ever gets here. If you're waiting for tomorrow, I will pursue God with all my heart. Tomorrow never comes. That's the reality. The wealthiest place on planet Earth that holds more riches than any other place is the cemetery. In that cemetery are so many revolutionary ideas the next great inventions that would have changed the world, dreams, all sorts of beautiful intentions, books that were never written, songs that were never sung. There they lay, the wealthiest place in the world because tomorrow never, ever came. Friends, it is time to pursue God with all your heart, and it's time to start right now. Come on, somebody, right here. 
Right now, it is time to pursue God with your whole heart. If you are waiting for the right time, if you're waiting for just the right moment, friends, this is it. Today, start right now. It's such a key to pursue God with your whole heart. Verse six says this, marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that they may have many grandchildren. Listen to this. Multiply. Do not dwindle away. Multiply right there where you're planted in exile. Refuse to dwindle away. I know that everything is not perfect. I understand that some situations are out of your control, but do not dwindle away. King's House step number two this morning is this. Do something different. Do something different. If you want to pursue God with all your heart, let me ask you this question. Was there a time in your life where you were seeking God more? A time in your life where you were serving more, giving more. A time in your life where you were more passionate. A time in your life where you were dreaming bigger dreams, worshiping more, praying more, reading God's word more. If there was a time in your life, friends, make a decision today. I'm going to stop dwindling away. I refuse. I make the choice to do something different. And by God's grace and his power and his Holy Spirit at work in my life, I am going to multiply, do something different this morning, King South. I believe with all my heart that faith is simply just a muscle. The more you use that faith, the bigger it gets. The less you use it, the weaker it gets. So many people inside the King's house, I'm talking to you this morning and probably lots of other churches, but I can't control them, right? So many people inside the King's house, man, my faith's just not what it used to be. Man, I remember a time when I was just so passionate and I was just so committed and man, my whole heart was just in it. I remember a time where, man, the, the dreams and the purposes of God just burned inside of me. Pastor, I don't know what happened. I just don't feel that anymore. You have to understand this morning, the faith hasn't gone anywhere. God's plans and purposes for your life, they haven't changed. They haven't just magically disappeared. Listen, those passions, they're still there. King's House, you just stopped using them. So you got to make this decision, I'm going to do something different different. If you're waiting in 2023 for the mystical, magical, Holy Spirit lightning bolt to smack you in the face, and then that day's never going to happen. Make a decision. Dad, gummit, I'm tired of circling the wagons. I'm tired of being stuck in this place, doing the same things that I've always done. I'm tired of feeling my heart and my passion dwindle away. You have to make a decision. I can't make it for you. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pray more than I've been praying. I'm going to read more than I've been reading. I'm going to worship more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to serve more. I'm going to do something different. Man, I'm preaching so much better than you responding this morning. It's wild. It is. Good thing I don't struggle with confidence. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7. And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Two important words right there. Work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. Point number three, man, to get that heart moving, uh, this, this passion to pursue him with all your heart is simple. Get to work. Get to work, friends. We get, we get in these ruts, and we get stuck in these ruts. And then we allow the enemy to do what he is so great at doing, man. He lies to us. He steals from us. You have to understand these people were in exile. This was not their home. They didn't want to be there. They didn't just happily go to Babylon. They were captives. They were drug out of their homeland to a place that wasn't there. Are you feeling me this morning? They didn't want to be there. They weren't happy about it. Their hopes and dreams, and their, they, they weren't coming true. And many of us face these types of situations every day. I hate my job. 
I hate my boss. I hate where God has me planted. I hate McAllister. I hate that I never know from day to day if I'm going to have water. I hate that I have to replace my tires once a year because of the unbelievable amounts of potholes in this city. I hate the season that I find myself at in this life. I hate the state of my marriage. I hate that I don't have friends. Just just fill in the blank. And here the Israelites are. All the same complaints, man, I don't want to be here. This wasn't my hope. This wasn't my dream. It wasn't supposed to be like this. God, when is this? God, when is this? God, And his response, his solution to all of this was get to work. Get to work for the city that you're in exile in. Get to work because when they prosper, friends, you prosper. Like it or not, the more your work prospers, the more your boss prospers, the more your marriage, your city, the more your church prospers. Guess what, King's House? The more you prosper. Maybe, just maybe, God planted you here on purpose. Get to work, man. Get to work. You're here. This is the season that you're in. Like it or not. Irrelevant of how you got here. You are here. So let me ask you these questions. How are you working to better this community? How are you working to better this city? How are you working to better this church? I know this place isn't perfect. How are you working to better it? How are you working to better your family? How are you working to better your marriage? Are you praying or have you fallen into the trap of just sitting around and complaining, friends? Two very different things. Now, you can sit around and throw yourself a little pity party and whine and sniffle and complain all day long, or you can make this decision, I'm going to pursue God with my whole heart, and I'm going to get to work. I'm telling you, if you want to jumpstart your spiritual life in the year 2023, if you feel like you got some clogs and some roadblocks, the easiest way to fix that is get to work. We sit around and we say, well, God, I don't know where God wants me to go. And I don't know the direction for his life. And I just don't feel that he's moving in my heart. And have you ever gotten behind the steering wheel of a parked car? And have you tried to turn those wheels? It is so difficult. And after just a little bit, the steering wheel locks up. And it don't matter what you do, you can't turn it. And there it sits, 100% not fulfilling its purpose of what a car is supposed to do. And you can be as frustrated as you want to be behind that steering wheel. And you can cuss and you can holler and you can yank and you can break things. But until you get that car moving... That steering wheel ain't going anywhere, friends. It's the same way in our lives. You can be as frustrated with God as you want to be, complain as loud as you want to complain, but as long as you're sitting by idly, there is so little that he can do in your life. Well, I don't want to go to the wrong direction. Dadgummit, get moving and then let him steer your direction. But you got to get to work, King South. You got to get this thing moving in your personal life. Colossians 3, 23 says this. I think it's very important to see the context of this verse as well because Paul is specifically writing this verse to slaves in Colossians 3. Probably assume that they're not real thrilled with their situation. Probably can assume that they're not real happy or hopeful of their future. Probably a million other things they'd rather be doing. I mean, they are slaves when Paul writes this verse. And he writes this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Whatever you do, man, you might be absolutely miserable, so frustrated with the season and the situation that you find yourself in. Your heart feels so cold and so hardened, but whatever you do, work and work with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Listen, I know Walmart might sign your check, I know the base might sign your check. You don't work for Walmart. You don't work for the base. You work for the Lord, man. Everything you do is unto the Lord. Listen, since you know, you know that you will receive an inheritance. Friends, there's something so much bigger and so much more important than a paycheck or some 401k retirement plan. You have an heavenly inheritance that you are working for and preparing for right now. You have an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. 
everything we do this year, we are going to do it with all our hearts. Not for Mark Hennon. Please don't do it for Mark Hennon. Not for the staff. Not for obligation. Not for guilt. Everything we do, we're going to do with all of our heart because we ain't working for the King's house. We are working for the Lord. And I know that there is an inheritance and there is a reward waiting on me. Listen, I'm already doing some neck exercises because I'm going to have a big old heavy crown when I get to heaven, church. You know, come on. It's uh, unique because we understand some of these principles. I mean, if you want to be great at basketball, you can't just halfway do basketball. If you want to be great at football, you can't just halfway do football and then be frustrated. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like, man, I want to be a great athlete. I want to be great at basketball, great at football. Uh, I, I, I really don't want to get off the couch. Man, I just love playing Nintendo and eating potato chips. I want to sleep till 11. Uh, the gym, no, I don't want to, no, I don't want to go to the gym. Lift weights, negative. Calisthenics, you know, uh, speed, agility exercise. I don't really want to do any of that. Don't really want to practice. Like staying after and shooting extra shots, like that doesn't really interest me. But I'm just so frustrated that I'm not growing, that I'm not getting better at basketball. And stupid coach's fault, he's not playing me. He doesn't know nothing about the sport. And, and that's nonsense, right? It is. We all understand that in practical terms. However, when it comes to our walk with the Lord, we want to do the absolute minimal. Boy, it got so quiet in here, just whoosh, like a little mouse. Ooh. We want to do the absolute bare minimum. Pray as little as possible. Seek God only when it's convenient or when we need. I mean, as little as possible. And then we have the audacity to be disgruntled with the church or frustrated with God. Why aren't things happening in my life? Why am I still struggling with the same things I've always struggled with? Lord, why aren't you opening this door? Why, the, why, 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 why? Is there really any other option, King's House? You can't halfway this relationship with God. You can't halfway your pursuit of God and expect these amazing results. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if you could, but that's just not the, it's not the case. And I wanna make a very bold challenge to every person in the house this morning. A very bold challenge. And my challenge is that you would give me one year of your life. That's my challenge to you. One, I mean, one year, that's it. Give me one year of your life. But not, not half-hearted year, right? I mean, one year where you make this commitment, I'm gonna do this thing with all my heart. I mean, I, I'm going all in. I'm burning every bridge. I am going to do this thing with all my heart. I mean it. Like some of you need to make this commitment. I'm going to give one year. I'm going to attend with all my hearts. Some of us are really good at this little one, two, skip a few, 99 in heaven. Woo! It's hard to grow in God when I see you once every seven or eight weeks. I'm gonna attend with all my heart. You make this commitment, I'm gonna pray with all my heart. I'm gonna worship God with all my heart. I'm gonna study his word with all my heart. Listen, you are making this commitment, I'm gonna plug in to my local church body. I'm stopping at that table on the way out. I'm gonna be intentional and this year, I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna build relationships. You gotta be intentional in doing that. It doesn't just happen, but you're giving me one year with all your heart, man. I'm gonna to join a home group. I'm going to join some discipleship classes. I'm going to go to Financial Peace University. I'm signing up for the marriage conference in February. I'm going to attend Celebrate Recovery, the greatest place to be on a Monday night at six o'clock. I'm going to go to men's breakfast and women's events. I'm going to conferences. I'm going to do it with my whole heart for a year. Here's my promise, my, my bold claim, that if you will give me one wholehearted year, I promise you that God will revolutionize your relationship with Him. I promise you He will revolutionize your finances, your marriage, your family. You will be closer to God than you ever thought possible. I promise you, we have the systems, we have the leaders, we have the programs, the processes in place. If you will just say, God, I'm gonna do this with my whole heart. Are you serious? about God doing some changes in your life? 
Or do you like to just sit around and complain and point your little finger at everybody else in your life? I'm telling you, I'm sick of those days, man. I'm making a decision. I'm ready for God to do some work in this heart of mine. Are you with me? Man, I'm ready. I promise you. Give God one year of wholehearted. And listen, next January, if you come to me and say, hey, I did it, dudes. I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to apologize. And I'm going to say, man, let me help you find a different church. Because if you go wholehearted for a year and God's not moving in your life, you're in the wrong place, man. I don't want you here. Listen, if you're not growing and God's not working in your heart, go find a different church. There's like a hundred others to choose from in Pittsburgh County. Go find you one. But make this decision. I am going to live my life, pursue God with all my heart. In the year 2023, I promise you, God will do a work in your life. We pray with me today, King Sass. God, I love you so much. God, I thank you that you are faithful. Your promises are true. God, when we seek you, we find you. When we ask, we receive. When we knock, God, you open doors. God, would you put a passion in every one of these hearts to pursue you in ways like they've never pursued you, to go after you in ways like they've never gone after you. And Father, as we do, I thank you that you are going to meet us. Revolutionize our hearts. Heal the broken pieces of our lives. Heal our marriages. Heal our souls, minds, bodies, uh, emotions, God. That you are just going to transform us into healthy, whole believers that you want us to be. God, I can't wait to see everything you do in this upcoming year. We'll be so careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Listen, I'm, uh, something we're going to start today and we're going to do every single service for the rest of our existence is at the end of every single service, I'm going to have the prayer team down front. So if you are here this morning and you have any needs, if you are here this morning and you need to talk, if you need to pray, if you need to confess, if you need, whatever you need, the prayer team is going to be available for you every single Sunday. Listen. As you leave the doors, we're going to have some of our department leaders out there. Meet with them, talk with them, find where God wants you to plug in and get busy getting to work, King's House. Six o'clock tonight is financial peace. If you haven't signed up and you need God to work in your finances, I can lead you to water, but I cannot make a drink, King's House. Please sign up. I love you guys. God bless you. See you Wednesday night.